No Jumper, coolest podcast in the world. And today we got the one and only Doggy Style on the podcast. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. How you feeling, man? I'm living, bro. Yeah? Yeah, that's all that matters to me right now. That's what you said when you first walked in, yeah. too. So you, you're not taking it for granted that you're alive. Nah, nah. I, ain't, I ain't that type of guy, bro. Can't do it. Really? Yeah. Damn. So w what is that, though, that keeps you so in touch with that? I feel like I be watching a lot of prison shows to, like, take, to, to feel like I'm not taking my freedom for granted. Man, I was, from witnessing things, you mm. feel me? Seeing other people go through things, I, that's like, to me, that's something that I look at like, damn, that can't be me. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So, I mean, sometimes you got to go through things in order to be the person you've been looking for, you feel me? So, I've I been through shit. So. I get that idea. You've been through a lot. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Yeah. yeah, facts. Facts. Talk to me about just where you grew up and everything. The, the Dino, San Bernardino, is like a legendary place. But we, they haven't really had that many. Has there been a rapper that popped off out of there, really? There was a rapper probably like in 2000, 2001. I forgot her name, but he popped out. He had it popping, but nobody really knew about San Bernardino still to this day. You know what I'm saying? And it's rough out there. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Ain't nobody trying to see you make it. If they ain't making it, they ain't trying to see you make it. Right. You know what I'm saying? So it's like... It's really the trenches out there. You know what I'm saying? We like, we, I guess you could call us another Chicago. Really? You know what I'm saying? You it's feel bad. like it's that bad? It's bad. What? It's bad, bro. Right. I lived it. So I, I know it's bad. It's Cr bad. Because I remember one time we were uh, driving up from, from L.A. going to San Francisco or some shit. And one of the homies had to like stop and go to a weed clinic or whatever. And all of a sudden we're driving by like the oldest fucking McDonald's in the world or mm -hmm. whatever, you know? Yeah, you know, East Street. Yeah. Right. And so we're driving by there and shit. And I, I, we went and drove through it. And I posted a photo on Snapchat and shit. And my fucking DMs are blowing up by kids who are just like, what the fuck are you doing in the Dino? Bro, it's bad. It is bad. And it's crazy because, I mean, we get overlooked by everybody. You mm. feel me? I mean, the first place when people come out here, they land is L.A. So nobody knows too much about uh, San Bernardino. But trust me, it, it, it's lit out there. You right. I had to get up out of that motherfucker. You did? So you yeah, moved? I mean, what? Come oh, on okay. now. I, ain't stay, I can't be popping and living in it. That's how I got popped. Like, I, can't, mm. I can't do it. You know what I'm saying? So it, it, was, it was either stay there and get... You know what I'm saying? Or get into bullshit. Right. Or leave and right. succeed. You know what I'm saying? So it's like you can't be. I mean, like I said, I learned off of everybody else's mistakes and what they've been through. Like just seeing like even all these rappers, bro, you see what's going on. Everybody's dying and you die in your own city. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Because your own city ain't through, they ain't trying to see you make it. Right. So that was my thing. So I was like, mm. and I was a hard head. People was telling me to get up out of there. And I was like, nah, I ain't leaving. Cause like, this is me, nigga. Ain't nobody gonna run me out. Right. But just my daughter and everything, you know mm. what I'm saying? It's like either the streets or you could pick and like, she has nothing to do with this. Exactly. So it's, to me, it's in my, power to get her up out of here. You How old's your daughter? She four. She just turned four in May. Right. Yeah. My daughter's six months, but I feel that 100% where I'll be hearing, you know, there was a terrible story that came out of Chicago about a, a guy who went to a McDonald's with his daughter and the, they shot at him. And I guess he had been posting videos pissing on his op's grave yeah. the day before. They spray him up, but they actually hit the girl seven times, kill her. See, you see that? You and see, I was mm -hmm. like, bro, this is beyond irresponsible for you to be going around and putting your kid in, in the line of fire when you're running around basically like asking people that shoot at you, facts, you know? Facts, See, out of to me, stuff like that, to me, you, you are asking for it. Uh -huh. And if, like, even with my situation, bro, like, it took me, like, when, when all this shit started touching the air and everything and shit started happening, I had to stay away from my baby. And mm -hmm. it was sad. It was, it was fucking me up. You know what I'm saying? But I didn't want her to be at the wrong place at the wrong time. You feel me? Just because of my bullshit. So mm -hmm. it's like, it was time where me and my baby mom used to get into it because I didn't want to pick her up. And mm -hmm. it's only because I was trying to save her. You feel me? And it, it was just like, like I'm, I mean, from where I'm from, we like the, we the most hated. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Nobody fuck with us. Nobody like us. You know what I'm saying? So I know that it was too dangerous for her. You know what I'm saying? So it was like, nigga, I had to, I had to tell her, like, I don't, I can't, I don't want her around it. Not until I get up out of here. You mm -hmm. feel me? So it was, it was just bad, you know. Definitely. So, okay, talk about your very young upbringing. Like, w what your environment was like growing up. Were both of your parents around? Well, it was, we, we, we was poor. Right. You know what I'm saying? We was poor. We were struggling. My mom and I, we were living from 
place to place. Are there a lot of people in San Bernardino that have a lot of money, though? Because my impression yeah. was that it looked like it was kind of overall Man, not. Is there a rich Poverty part of town? Broke, no. Okay. Well, I mean, there's there's a good there's a good in every area. Right. You know what I'm saying? You it's a good, but it's not actually San Bernardino. I mean, the North End is probably the best you're gonna get out of that shit. And that shit bad over there too, because you got the people yo, the people run to the North End too. So it's like mm. when when the stuff start happening, when they run up there, that's when start, start stuff start happening up there. But as far as you if you say like Highland, that's like it's not San Bernardino, but it's close to San Bernardino. I guess you could say that's the best part of it. Mm. But other than that, man, it's poverty. Our downtown ain't is not. I mean, you it's no good in it. It's right. no good. It's like it's either police stations or or just ran down. No, just nobody lived there. Vacant, all type of shit. It's bad, bro. We don't have nothing. That's the part of San. Mar- that's that's like so. What's so bad about San Bernardino? Cause we people feel like we don't have nothing to like live for mm. because like you like like we lobsters in the box like you know what i'm saying we just stuck in there and i had to what made me realize that was the fact that when i started traveling mm. you know what i'm saying i started looking at the life different like bro it's other shit up out out here than just san Bernardino. like i ain't never been nowhere outside san Bernardino, so i had that san Bernardino mind state so I feel like every real gangster rapper that I interview has that story about mm-hmm. how there was like a moment where it was like, oh shit, there's a lot more to life than just being on my block. Yeah, facts. And that facts. is like the, the eye-opening experience. Some facts. people choose to, to learn from that and some people just ignore Some it. Some people ignore it, but I'm not going to do that. Right. I want to win, bro. And I want my homies, to my, my true homies, I want them to win with me. I got to mm-hmm. take them with me. You know what I'm saying? But I, like I always tell them, like, niggas, other things in life I had to experience just from going to New York like mm. I took advantages, I took advantage of like my labels, not my label, but label record label that was trying to sign me. Mm. I could have been like, nah, but I, me, I'm the type of dude that's gonna be like, man, I'm about to use this to my advantage. I like, I'm about to go flight. out there. The yeah, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> On my mom, I'm about to go take this, and I experienced that, and I start seeing different environment, different people, different everything. I'm like, oh, this is damn, this is crazy. Mm. Like San Bernardino ain't, we don't have that. I mean. You have to live there. You have to go there to understand. I could tell you what I wanted. I could tell you everything, but to live it is different. You feel me? I mean, even driving around for a little while, I I, I know it, it, there's a shitload of cities in America mm-hmm. that are like this, where maybe they were thriving and they had a lot of business going on 50 years ago or 30 or 40 years ago. And then at some point that kind of runs out, all these businesses run overseas or I don't know exactly what San Bernardino's uh, economic collision was there, but then you end up with all these people that live there and all these kids and they got nothing, no opportunities. Like that's the one thing you say about New York. You're a kid who grows up in New York, you see everywhere that there's an opportunity mm-hmm. and that it's yes. so goddamn expensive that you can't even fucking you, think about exactly, living there unless you really you, start you hustling can't. you know exactly you got to go out there and get in in new york in san Bernardino, you could it's we got homeless people out there it's man bro i can't even explain like i'm the type of dude like once you start experiencing things and you come back into the bullshit mm. like it makes you depressed like i was depressed in that month like but I'm, I can't leave it. Mm. I keep coming back to it. You feel me? Like I just like I got my people out there, got my homies out there. I try to stay away from it as much as I can, but it's like when you're so used to that, you you go back to it. Mm. But I, I won't. No, I can't live there. I mm. can't live there. You know what I'm saying? It's too much stuff there. You feel me? So right. I, I like, nah. I feel it. So when you were walking around in New York and shit, though, did you feel kind of like a freedom? that you are not used to because you're always used to have to watch your, watch your ass yeah. and you're always like, you know, like in New York, it's like you're just kind of anonymous. People aren't really worried about mm-hmm. you and shit like that. Yeah, it's different out there. Like, nobody knew me and I was happy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm not lying to you, bro. <laughs> like, because you know, growing up in the gangs and stuff like that, when people, they might be fans, but when they come up to you automatically on defense, like, who is you? Like, I mm. so many times that I was like that on fans, and they didn't mean no harm, but for me being in my environment and knowing what people want to do to me and this and that, it made my mind say, like, I can't I can't trust nobody. And I'm still like that. I don't mm. trust none, bro. I can't do it. You know what I'm saying? But being in New York, it was cool, you know what I'm saying? But it's cold as hell. Like, it's <laughs> hella cold, dude. Yeah. It's a different type of weather out there. It was so cold, I had to go inside the stores because the stores was warm. I just sit there and watch outside. Like, you know what I'm saying? I stay out here, but it's different. Mm. You know, it's a good, I ain't, I ain't everything that I seen 
on TV about New York was true. Mm. The the the, uh, the uh, swamp. I mean, you know the uh, the sewers, how to smoke. We can, all oh, that, yeah, all yeah. that is true. <laughs> like I'm, I'm that stuff right, right there. Yeah. Stuff like that amazed me because I ain't never seen that. You and know just what being saying? surrounded by all these massive fucking buildings, buildings you stuff. can't see shit. No matter which way you look, you can only look straight up. Yeah, <laughs> like L.A. was the only close thing to New York I could say that I've probably been as far as like build, big buildings. We have buildings out there in, uh, in uh, San Bernardino, but they're ran down like. Mm. It's so dead out there. If you ain't killing nobody, you in jail. Like, or you just ain't doing nothing. It's so hard to make it because nobody pay attention to us. Mm. So it was hard for me to make it to where I'm at. It's not. I'm not where I want to be, but I'm progressing. You feel what I'm saying? Mm. So it's it's a good thing, and you know. Do you feel like you had much of a childhood, or at what point did it kind of transition from childhood to adulthood? I feel like that when my mama was going through her things, like you had, like we had no choice but to go out there and, and get things, you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Make it for her. And like, I don't know, like we had a childhood and like, of course me and my older brother really had a ch- childhood, uh, childhood, my younger, my younger brother and my sister, I can't really say that they did because by the time they were a certain age, my mom was like, wasn't who she used to be. You mm-hmm. feel me? She was already down there dying and type shit. But, from drugs, I'm assuming? Nah, or? hell oh, no. My oh. mom didn't do no damn drugs. Okay. But, uh... <clears throat> Apologies. Nah, you good, bro. But nah, damn, you got... That's the first thing you think of? Like, <laughs> I mean, uh, well, there's, there's probably a lot of people strung out on drugs out there, I'm nah, assuming. Nah, nah. My mom ain't hell no, cuz. Okay. But, uh, Apologies. she, uh... Nah, she had... What happened was, back in the day, like in the 90s, because my mom was one of those, you know, but she... She just felt like things was going on with her life, so she tried to commit suicide. Oh, wow. Yeah, she shot herself with a twenty two. What happened was the bullet ricocheted and hit damn near every organ in her body, and, and, but she, she survived, you know what I'm saying? And she ended up catching kidney disease for 20-some years. She had it, you couldn't tell, because she was so beautiful. She, she was healthy until, like, the last year, last four years of her life, you know what I'm saying? That's when she started other complications start coming. She started catching, like, flesh-eating disease, but I blame it on San Bernardino, because, like, you know what I'm saying? Because they don't, San Bernardino don't give a fuck about it. I'm telling you, like, San Bernardino fucked up. Like, they don't care about none of their people out there. So every time my mom to go to that, that hospital, she'll come out crying or whatever the case may be and saying that they were doing this to her, woo, woo, like, shit like that. But she never wanted to sue them. She never wanted to do this, never wanted to, you know, but... She ended up dying from, like, she ended up dying from, like, uh, uh, what was it called? Um, pneumonia. Um. Pneumonia caught on to her. That was the cause, one of the causes of death, pneumonia and kidney disease. She caught, she, when she had kidney disease, my cousin gave her a kidney, but the doctor wouldn't give her no more medicine for the kidney, and it failed. Really? And after it failed, that's when she started. But well, she's always on dialysis from like she's on dialysis for like ten, eight years. Uh-huh. But she was doing good with it. It was keeping her alive. But right. that ended up failing because the doctor wouldn't give her damn pills, and she ended up dying. Wow. Like yeah, at the end of the like at the end, she ended up dying. I knew that she caught pneumonia because I told her because she was coughing inside the damn room. And I told her like, Mom, like you gotta go to the hospital. That sound that don't sound like no regular damn cough. It sound, it sound like pneumonia right. she didn't want to go because of the shit she was dealing with in the hospital but i'm telling her like man i don't have the equipment we don't have the equipment here you know what i'm saying so if anything they they you could go to a different hospital and she did she went to a different hospital it was the hospital that her grandma died at that she used to call mama and she when she went there they diagnosed her with uh a pneumonia and wow. she died probably like a few weeks later damn yeah it's, it's you know it's life bro and that's one thing about me bro is that I learned that life goes on, bro. Mm. I had that's that that was my that was my biggest fear, but after that I had to realize that life goes on. Losing your mom is your biggest fear. Yeah, yeah that was my biggest what that was my biggest fear. So how did you begin to sort of work through that and then get used to dealing with that? <sighs> Shit, I guess time, bro. Mm. Like I wrote in my music. I didn't I didn't even I didn't even cope with it deep. Like I didn't cope with it like I wanted to. You feel me? Because me and my pops was getting to it, you know what I'm saying? We we it was cause you know when emotions in, is in the air, mm. heads start colliding. Me and my pops getting to it, I ended up getting kicked out, moved in with my baby mom, we ended up getting to it, whatever the case that may be. And <clears throat> for months I was man, I was broke, bro. Like I'm on my mama cause I was broke. I bought me a new car after my mom passed, I bought me another car. 
I didn't have nowhere to live, so all my shit was in there. From studio stuff, clothes, drawers, every pair of shoe I ever had was there. I had the car for probably like three weeks and niggas stole it. Mm. With all my shit in there, and I was walking around barefooted. My auntie came and I had a little help here and there. They came and bought me a little thing. We went to DD's. That's how bad it was, bro. Like, I didn't have shit. And I, but I, my mind was so gone. Like, I didn't even give a fuck. Like, nigga, like, it was either, you know, I didn't care, bro. You know what I'm saying? That's why I, be, I believe that that's part of me, of, that's part of a reason why I was a crash dummy, too. You feel me? But it was, it was a lot of things going on in my life, just period. You know what I'm saying? So. You feel like around that time? Well, how old were you when you lost your mama? I was. My mom died. I was like, I was eight years ago. I think I was like oh, nineteen, twenty. Okay. Yeah, like nineteen, twenty. So you're like that. you're going through the pain of of losing your mother, but then at the same time you're having to survive and getting your car took. Like you're painting yeah. the picture of just how fucking difficult it was for you to even yeah, be able to keep it going at that man, point. I had to. Mm. I had to. You know what I'm saying? I had no choice. That's a, and I always had a strong mind. You feel me? I can't let. And I, like I said, that's what made me realize that nigga, is is you, you gotta live, dude. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Because if you, number one, I didn't have the, I don't have the heart for no suicide shit. I don't have the heart. I had the heart to live, though. You feel me? But I ain't got the heart to just die like that. Cause so you know, it was like, if for me, I just, I just had to stay strong minded. Mm. If, if my mom passed, bro, no lie, I was recording a song. I forgot what song it was. I think it was called Fakes. I think that's one of them. I was recording that. My mom died. And everybody outside kicking it. You know, everybody grieved different. And mm -hmm. I couldn't believe it. I'm in there trying to record shit, and I'm crying every time. Every time I touch the mic, I'm crying, just crying, crying, crying. My pops came in there and told me, like, nigga, you got to do it, bro. You have to. He's like, nigga, you, 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 you got to just, just let her live through you. And I took that shit deeply. And that's why everything I do to keep me out of trouble, to keep me out of jail, to keep me from being killed, you know what I'm saying? I try to move different. I be smart. I use the intelligence from the streets of life. My dad taught me, and, and, and intelligence of everything else. My mom taught me, and I, I just combine that. You feel me? I combine it, and it makes me an intelligent dude. You feel mm -hmm. me? To have both best of both worlds. So that's why I do, man. Like I'm, I'm trying to move. I'm trying to move smarter than the next. Mm -hmm. You feel me? I'm trying to be ten toes, 20, 10, 20 feet. You all that ahead of the next dude. You feel me? Definitely, because I mean, when you think about what your mom would have wanted for you, when you say you were a crash test dummy at one point, I mean that's probably the worst case scenario yeah. from her perspective for you to throw your life away for nothing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's why it's man, it's crazy, bro. But it's life, bro. Ain't mm -hmm. nothing we could do about it. But live, dude. Time, time can heal, but you can't heal all the way. But you know how to function normally. I know how to function normally. Right. You know what I'm saying? As time goes, so it don't. You know what I'm saying? Like, my, my baby was born on Mother's Day, too, mm. a year after her. So it was like, I'm, I'm happy. I got my baby. You know what I'm saying? So that's my that's my my escape. And you know what I'm saying? That's my inspiration. Besides mm. my mistakes, that's my inspiration. I feel that. Because, I mean, yeah, like, there's a certain way that, that you can live where you, you know, are, are taking too many risks and you're taking too many chances and you're just sort of living like you don't give a fuck about yourself. And then once you have a kid... It really forces, like, even the most gangster, crazy-ass motherfucker to really look at their life and say, even if I'm willing to take this risk, do I want to take that risk of, of my kid not having mm -hmm. me around? Mm -hmm. And that's just fu fundamentally, I think that changes a lot of people. It does, but some niggas don't change for me. That's true. If I, see a, be I see honest, a lot of people not changing dude, at all. It's some niggas that don't change for me. But the thing about me is that I care about mine. Mm. Some dudes don't care about their kids like I do. Mm. I'm willing to change for mine. Are you willing to change for yours? That's your own preference, not me, because I'm going to change for mine. You know what I'm saying? Because, number one, I can't just go on life looking at my baby, knowing I'm doing wrong, and I can't, you know what I'm saying? Or just knowing I'm putting her in bullshit, and she's so innocent, don't know what's going on. You mm -hmm. feel me? So it was like, I, I'm not going to ever do that. If I could move my baby, it's not about me no more. I had to learn that by myself. Like, it's not about me. It's, it's all about her. So the way I move is going to reflect on her, too. So it's like, mm, I can't do it. You feel me? So it's, I don't know. Everybody different. I'm, that's why I got to be different. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? Because I'm different. I don't move like the next. But to be honest, I mean, dudes making babies and then not taking care of them, not sticking around, not trying to be involved in their lives. It's like the, one of the biggest plagues upon society right now yeah. is how normal that shit is yeah. to people, you, you know? You a buster if you do that. I can't respect you as you, a gangster. You're acting like you're like very out of the ordinary because yeah. that's 
important to you. I it's mean, that, that should be the default for everybody. You that's know? supposed. That's supposed to be. If you ain't got nothing else to change for, change for her. Mm. Like I said, it's not. It's, it's change for your kids, bro. I love mine. Some dudes don't care. I can't even see how you can have a baby and not be there for her. Mm. I can't. I look. I mean, every day I come home or whatever the case. When I see my daughter, even when I'm away from, I think about her. So how can you not think about your own? You feel me? So it's like. I think it's unfair for anybody to just abandon their kids, you know what I'm saying, when they didn't ask to be here. Mm. You know what I'm saying? I want I, I I only can imagine what, what it's like to not have your parents. Mm. You feel me? I had I experienced mine. I experienced uh, a mommy and daddy. You feel me? Some people ain't even had that. Mm. And so I'm not going I and I ain't going to say I took mine for granted. You know, we just being kids, you always you always fuck up. You mm. feel me? But you don't realize what you got until it's gone. You probably think you realize it, but you don't realize it as much as you think you do. You feel me? Until it's gone. You be like, damn, like, like it, it hurts. You feel me? So I know if I, God forbid, you know what I'm saying, it almost happened, but if something happened to me, it's going to hurt my baby because I'm all her know, I all, I'm all she know besides her mama and her other side of the family, you feel me? So I can't let that happen. I'm going to move smart. I don't care what niggas, what anybody say about me, you feel me? And they'll keep that away from me, though. You 100%, feel me? Yeah. So, okay, when you were growing up, though, wh when did would you say you got introduced to, like, the streets? And, and what, what was, like, you know, there's a lot of different types of ways that people sort of get introduced to gangs. Like, what, mm. what was it that drew you to it? Well, I, I was raised around it. Mm. I was raised with my dad, you know, he, you know, I was raised around it. You right. see what I'm saying? So it's already, I already was introduced to it. You mm. feel me? From a kid being in the hood, my dad, always, I'm always over there with him, under him and shit like that. So it's like, you can't, even if, even like kids, like even with parents of kids that don't even know anything about gang banging, but you got to think, you could keep your kids away from shit as much as you can, but you got to think that they go to school. Mm -hmm. So when they go to school, that shit is still there from other people. Right. You feel me? So it's like, it's going to be there. It's like, you just got to have a strong state of mind. You could be a gang banger, but move smart. You mm -hmm. feel me? There's a difference from a gang banger and a gang member, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, but just move smart. Don't move like a next. But was your dad trying to keep you away from the more dangerous aspects of it? I, he he was, he, I don't know. He was young too. You mm. feel me? He tried to keep us away, but how can you keep us away? He didn't keep us away too much, but because I'm always over there. You right. know what I'm saying? But my mom was always the one to keeping us away. Sometimes I still go over there. My dad did try to keep us away, but we already seen it. It's too late. Right. You know what I'm saying? We want to be like daddy. You mm. feel me? So it's like, there's only so much you can do. You feel me? But like my younger brother, he ain't never really, you know, experienced what me and my older brother did. You feel me? As far as living around that time when my dad was really active. So mm. it was like, he, he 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 was a good person though. He still is. But so your little brother like kind of missed out on all that because yeah. your dad was sort of out of that lifestyle Yeah, after that, that point. he got out of it. Mm. You know what I'm saying? He got out of it. You know what I'm saying? And, he, and he did it for us. Right. You know what I'm saying? So, and you know, and plus, you know, facts is, like, the hood don't love you as much as your family do, bro, mm. at the end of the day. And that's facts, bro. There's only so much, like, you have your certain homies that really do love you, but some, some most of them, a lot, a lot of time, the hood don't love you. The streets don't love you. Mm. I had to realize that the streets don't love you. Right. You know what I'm saying? And it's all good, though, you know what I'm saying, because you, you get a taste of it. When you get a taste, it, hopefully it's not too late for you to learn from it. Right. You feel me? But a lot of people don't even have a family. So then once they get a, a, a little bit of that gang experience that's to their, them, that's, yeah, that's their everything because that's what they've been looking for that's their, their whole family. life. Yeah, you know? That's their family. I mean, you got to be strong-minded. Mm. If you ain't strong-minded, you weak-minded. So it's like, mm, I don't know. Everybody's different, bro. Like, I don't know. You know, mm. so... So, okay. What, but I imagine there's one thing which is like wanting to be part of the gang but then there's a whole nother thing once it becomes there's opposition there's people that you're basically in the gang because it's going to protect you against mm -hmm. these other people and mm -hmm. stuff when does that start to take formation in your mind and was that always like a, a constant issue with you in, in San Bernardino I feel like a lot of people don't have shit to do but beef that's my I assumption I'm not really that I'm not a I'll, if it comes to me it comes to me you know what I'm saying I don't never ask for, for help but the homies got me you feel me so it's like I don't know, like, some people do it for the fame. Some people do it just because they're doing it. They don't know nothing about it, you know what I'm saying? But 
at the end of the day, it don't protect you. It don't protect you as much as you think you do. It fucks your life up. Mm. You feel me? It make you it now make you a target. It make you all type of things where you where you basically limit your life. You know what I'm saying? Game banking limits your life, homie. Mm. It really does. So it's like you either if you ain't a game banger, don't even do it. Mm. Honest truth, don't do it. Like that's like I, like me. It's not my destiny. I'm you, not gonna make it my destiny. You look at like grown ass men who become rappers and then they start talking all this crazy shit as like the weirdest thing ever because you were sort of born into it. Yeah, yeah. I, I was raised into it, bro. Mm. You know what I'm saying? I'm not gonna ever tell nobody the wrong thing to do. You know what I'm saying? Because I wouldn't want nobody to tell me the wrong thing to do. That's why I got some big homies that be in my ears about stuff. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Like when it comes to like rapping and, and me being successful, they stay in my ear. You know what I'm saying? Especially because it's, it's good for the hood too and it's good for me. They want me to win. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? So it's like you got to – ain't nobody – we ain't nobody like us. You feel me? At the end of the day. So I, I, I don't – I just stay up out of this shit. I feel it. So, were you getting in trouble a lot, like all through high school and after that? And I was getting suspended and shit, but I wasn't like, I had to, like, I was getting, I was fucking up badly. You know what I'm saying? Like, I was almost not graduating at all, bro, mm-hmm. like, at all. Like, I was fucking up, ditching, you know what I'm saying? Getting to fights until one day, <laughs> my last, my, I ain't gonna lie, my dad did whoop my ass. Yeah. Cause whooped my ass, yeah. My mama he whooped my ass because he told me straight up. He had to talk with me like, nigga, you made it this far and you fucking up. You know what I'm saying? And I had to, and that shit made me grasp on shit too. Like, damn, I made it this far. That's why. I, that's why I think the way I think now. Mm. Even being in dumb fucking positions, and I made it this far. I can't turn back. I'm already at the finish line. You feel right. me? I'm damn near there. So I can't turn back and throw all my shit away from a buster. You feel me? Mm. So it's like. I don't know. I just move wise, bro. I have to. Right. I have to. I got to be smarter than the next man. But when did that start to make sense to you? Like, oh, like, I actually have something to lose. Like, I can't just, you know, because you're talking about your dad beating your ass, even just about you not finishing high school, mm-hmm. right? Or, like, not, mm-hmm. not doing well in school. I mean, when I, when I really feel like I had a lot to lose is when I started making it in the rap, you know what I'm saying? Right. And I started finally getting recognition. And then it was just like, that's a lot to lose, bro. Just having that type of platform, me, look where I'm sitting. Mm-hmm. You feel me? I'm sitting with Adam. So it was like, that right there really made it seem like, okay, you got a lot to lose for show for show. That's the one thing that everybody in every neighborhood is trying to, not everybody, but there's always some people trying to become rappers. And we all know it's like a 998 failure rate oh hell yeah it's <laughs> hard yeah. but it's only hard if you make it hard mm. if you give up i mean like i tell people don't nobody believe in you like you believe in you mm. you feel me you gotta make your dream a reality a dream is only a dream if you keep it a dream right you feel me i make i'm making mine happen i have to now, i might not be where i'm at but everybody know who i am definitely that's facts w- were you influenced by anybody that you had seen or who, who made you feel like you could actually get started rapping well, I started rapping in 12th grade. My auntie put me on, but what happened was we had to make a, a song about smoking in junior, junior high school. I was in sixth grade. And I was like, well, shit, I'm going to try to do it. And I actually, my auntie helped me because she's a she was a rapper. She's one of those those tongue twisting. Oh, so okay. she, yeah, so she started writing and helping me out. And then I started going from there. You feel me? I'm influenced by a lot of rappers. I'm influenced, you know, I, I'm inspired by fucking Snoop, uh, Pac, Pac, I'm one of my favorite rappers. He's mm. my favorite rapper. You know what I'm saying? That's really uh, Ice Cube, all the West Coast, really. You know what I'm saying? But I mean, it's it's all love, bro. Why do you think you're always drawn to that side of shit? Like you, because you. That's one thing that stands out about you in particular is that you clearly have this great reverence for the old school sounds and style of the music. Like mm-hmm. that, that's what I grew up on. Like literally, Doggy, Doggy Style was my first mm-hmm. rap album that I gave a mm-hmm. fuck about, and I was like nine years old. Mm-hmm. And that to me, that like G Funk sound was. What the fuck is yeah. this? This is the greatest thing I ever heard in my life. Mm-hmm. And I was so little that I'm I'm sure it had that effect on you and a lot of other people too. Yeah, man. Well, I'm raised around that. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And uh me being raised and listening to like Snoop, uh Pac, my pops you now listen to all the old school stuff. I listen to all even when females sing, I listen to all type of 
you know what I'm saying, old school stuff, and I just got it in my heart, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? And me being dressed how I am, my pops to always dress me like this, and I just took it and kept it. Mm. I stuck to the roots and I still stand to the roots. I might be, it might be like a little 2000, but I'm still in the roots. You feel me? Ain't nobody doing it like me. Mm. And that's facts. I like it. Cause it's like, you know, there's a lot of people who just reject what their parents put them on to. Mm -hmm. And it's like, it's dope to see you very much like appreciating the, the tradition and the style at that yeah. time. You know? and, and I can't get away from it. I'll be trying to get away from it. Shit. I can't get away from it, bro. Yeah. I don't like, even with like all this fashion designer shit, I could go get all that, right. but it's not me. I'll be lying to myself trying to fit in with the next. I ain't just not me. I don't want, that's, no, that's not me. Right. You know what I'm saying? I can't do it. You know, but I stuck to the roots. Mm. You know? I respect it. So, okay, your, your, your aunt put you on to making music, and then how did you start proceeding with it? Like, was who was influencing you at that point? Yeah, just me. Yeah. My emotions, what I was going through, writing shit. I, I just stuck to it. You know what I'm saying? I don't, I can't even, like, I just stuck to it. It was, it, to me, it's an escape from everything, bro. When you able to, it's like a diary, bro. If you able to write down your, and it keep you, and keep your sanity, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? When you able to write down, jot down everything. If you listen to my music, a lot of that stuff is like facts, like it's shit that I'm going through. Right. You know what I'm saying? If, it, if, if I don't write it down, I might end up in jail. If I don't have nobody talking to me and putting shit in my ear and giving me the right, you know what I'm saying? I'm going to end up dead or in jail, bro. So right. to me, that's the only way to do it. You feel me? So... Yeah, I respect that. How'd you end up like getting beats or even getting in a real studio and making music for real? Because it's one thing to just be rapping with the mm -hmm. homies or have a little mm -hmm. studio in the in the crib or whatever. But how'd you actually start taking it serious? Well, I started with my my homie, uh, I Stay Live. That's his his his. That was my producer when we was in high school. He was my close homie first. We started making stuff together in the you know in the garage and stuff. We end up growing up and stuff. And after that, I started taking shit from like uh youtube mm. you feel me taking beats and shit like that and then i end up taking one of ace's beats and ace started really fucking with me and then i think he i don't know if he tapped in with me or i tapped in with him one of them it was so long ago and we he told me to come to the studio and every day i go not every day but when i can i go there if i can't go there i go to the homie sav the sav did his studio so that's how i've been came you know to me it don't matter if you're at home making music it's not what just how you do it you feel mm. me it's not what you do it's how you do it you know so i they ain't not real studio they home studios mm. but i think that's a big part of why people were, were so into what they were seeing from you is that the videos looked really good the music sounded really good it's from a place that we're not really like used to seeing mm -hmm. like a real dope depiction of what's going on there you know like mm -hmm. in la We've seen a fucking million videos from Compton. Facts, We're used facts, to seeing it. Same way, you know, I'd never seen it because I've been there, driven through there and stuff. But I, I, when I first saw your videos, I'm like, oh, wow. Like, this is actually what the fuck is going mm -hmm. down there. All right. Yeah, well, it's, man, it's, it's a beautiful thing, though. Right. You know but how'd saying? you start finding, like, a video guy? How'd you start, like, putting shit on YouTube and, like, doing crazy numbers and shit? Well, honestly, I right, started, I'm going to go, me and my little brother, and my cousins, we had started our own little thing, but it didn't work, but we, we kept it going. We still, we caught off an of iPhone, bro. Uh -huh. It started with me, we caught off an of iPhone, cause I always wanted to be my own entrepreneur. I wanted to mix mix my stuff, do my own videos. So we did a song called Into Something a long time ago. We did a few songs, videos, off an of iPhone, and we took put it on Final Cut Pro, and I started editing it. It's bull crap, but you know, it's, I was at the first stage of my life of doing my own videos. Then one day, my little cousin, this was probably like two years ago when I first started booming, my little cousin had shot with Voice, Voice Too Hard, uh -huh. in their little hood, you know what I'm saying? And I hit him, I was like, who your video man? Because he hard as hell, like, what the hell? He like, man, it's, it's the homie Voice, tap in with him. And I tapped in with Voice, been history ever since. Every time we throw shit out, it's... it's, it's we make sure it's movies, not no just regular ass clip. You feel right. me? It, it gotta make sense and it gotta look popping. Voice won't let me fuck up. Mm -hmm. If I tell him some bullshit, he gonna, you know what I'm saying? He gonna be in my head like, nah, bro, we ain't about to do that. We trying to hit a million, like, right? You no, know? but I mean, some don't, some don't, some do. But but what's your mentality about it though? Because like, you know, you could just do videos these days, super easy. Just post up outside the house, film it. It could even look really good. But like mm -hmm. also. 
I feel like a lot of your shit is like you'll have the whole neighborhood out. You'll have mm -hmm. a whole shitload of people coming out on the block, which mm -hmm. is just for the people watching the video. That's like really makes them feel like they're there to see how people are really yeah. living out there. Bang mine for sure. That was the mm -hmm. one. Bang mine. I put all my homies on because, like I said, I want to see my niggas win. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So that one right there, everybody gravitated to. But before that one, we different was the one that mm -hmm. popped. That was that pop. I didn't think it was gonna pop. Mm -hmm. To be honest, I didn't think. Voice the one was already saying like this is gonna hit it two million. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? It hit like two million in what like a week? I right. think it was two million or three million a week, and it's been going from from there. I didn't think it was gonna pop. You know, but I think it's more of me giving them, like you said, like me giving them that feeling that they that they're there, mm -hmm. living back in the past. Some people ain't never had that experience, but I think that's what it is too. But Bang Minds was for show. Sure I think one of the hood, best hood songs out in right. videos. Cause I put, what, like six dudes on there? Six, eight, and it's like eight minutes. And everybody on there got bars, right. you know what I'm saying? So that popped, you know? And so were those all like your close friends? Or? Yeah, them was close homies, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? So I'm gonna leave it at that. Okay. You know what I'm saying? That's what's up. So, okay, as your career is catching fire though, and like things are really starting to look up and up, do you start getting negative attention? Like, obviously, there was the situation where you got jumped at one point, but did you start feeling, like, the hate and the sort of envy, like, right away? Hell yeah. What? Mm -hmm. You could feel it. You could see it. You know, sometimes you can't see it, but you could feel it. Or you might mistake it. But I'm so much of a I don't trust you type of nigga, like, uh, I'm, I'm going to automatically feel it. But I got hate shit, you know what I'm saying? But who don't? When right. you popping, that's what happens. You know, a hater only expands you. That's how I feel. That's how I take it. You know what I'm saying? Like I tell people, a hater believe in you more than you believe in yourself. Right. You know what I'm saying? Because they feel that you're going to make it. They know it. They know it before you. you was, feel me? was there a moment for you where you realized, like, oh, shit, like me going to get a fucking burger at night is not like it used to be six what? months ago? Hell <laughs> you know? yeah. I don't even, Look, I wasn't even going places, certain places, because I knew I'm, I'm not hard to miss. Right. You know what I'm saying? There's like even when I be having my mask on, I cover up my neck. <laughs> it's still you. <laughs> I got fans coming up to me. Hey, you doggy style woo. Right. Like shit. Like mm -hmm. damn. Nah, that ain't me. That's the little homie. I'll point at my little homie. Like, cause that's good. You know what I'm saying? Like, but no. nah, it was uh, it's been a few times. Even with me going into situations and an enemy or whatever, you spot me. Now it's like now it's some bullshit. You feel me? So it's like. It's not safe, cause like me being a, a, a popping artist and then being from San Bernardino where it's hella poverty and bad and violence, it made me super target. Like mm -hmm. I got a big G on my back right now, you know what I'm saying? And right. I'm cool with it. I'm ten toes in with it, you know what I'm saying? But it's like it's it's a dangerous thing to be a rapper and a game member, you know what I'm saying? And still living in the ghetto. Mm -hmm. That that doesn't mix. It's not a good combo. It don't. It yeah. don't make you, you. You now. I feel like everybody my enemy. Right. I can't trust nobody. I can't trust you. You might be a fan, but how do I? How do I know that? And, and when I think of somebody like Kodak Black, who he still lives like basically in the you know like relatively close to the the hood that he grew up in and shit. But he's so fucking rich that you can just have like a big mob of security outside your crib mm -hmm. and shit. And that's like it's totally different when you're somebody like you who's just starting to really taste fame and, and yeah. money off YouTube and all this shit. You know. It's dangerous though when you do that. Like, I had that. I, right. I had my homies. Mm. That's all that I need. I ain't need no security. Mm. Do my niggas. You know what I'm saying? But at that too, like that's another dangerous thing because I was I wasn't thinking. Cause like when you bring the homies and it's, it's and it's not it's not it's not it's not like nothing towards them. It's just that cause they used to it. When niggas come to your house, they make that a kicking spot. Mm. And when they make it a kicking spot, it become a hot spot. Mm -hmm. Now niggas know where you at. Ain't like niggas didn't know where I was already for my videos. I was like I said, crash dummy. So from the beginning, that you you consider that crash dummy I mean, behavior of filming videos in front in of your in front spot? of my shit mm. because I didn't give a fuck. Like niggas come over here, all right, we we already prepared for it type mm. shit. You feel me? But you always slip. Everybody slip. If you ain't if if niggas didn't slip, the hardest nigga would be alive right now. You right. feel me? Your homie would be alive right now. But it was just like. Shit became a hot spot, and mm -hmm. it wasn't their fault. It was, it was they just doing what they love to do, make sure the homies are good, kick it with the homies. You know what I'm saying? But it became something dangerous. Mm -hmm. You feel me? I don't feel like I ever seen anybody ask you about Nipsey in an interview. Was he somebody who inspired you a lot? And what did you yes, think? Yes, he of? really did. Yeah, 
Yeah, Nip really did inspire me. Mm. He's a big inspiration too. You know what I'm saying? The way he move. Right. You know what I'm saying? Sad that he had to go this way. Yeah. You feel me? But that's what happened when you you can't people need to stop thinking or trying to like prove a point to niggas. That's the part that's that's why I don't can't stand about these new niggas, these new rappers. Like, oh no, I ain't gotta go nowhere with no security. All right, cut put your life to test all you want. Mm. You know what I'm saying? You can't you can't move like that. Stop trying to prove niggas wrong, cause that's where you fuck up at. Mm. You know what I'm saying? But it's like me, if I if I can afford the security, nigga, I'm getting it. The right. fuck, I don't care what niggas feel about me, nigga. I'm protecting my life because number one, I can't defend myself be, behind a million motherfuckers that want to kill me. Right. You feel me? So it's either you either you you be smart about it or you go out the dumb way. Right. You feel me? I'm not going out no dummy, cause like I I almost did. You know what I'm and saying? And there's two ways to get caught, too, because it's like you're either going to get caught lacking, like if you stay sort of too yeah. close to your environment, or the cops are going to run up in your spot and there's going to be yeah, 50 guns and then exactly. you're going to get caught up like that, you know? You want to move wise, man. Mm. Like I tell them, you can have a you can have a, a AK on you. Your back is always turned towards somebody. Mm. It don't matter how big your gun is, bro. It's how big your whole, your fucking mind is, bro. Mm. If your mind ain't big, you gonna always lose. You gonna you have you gonna lose. You feel me? So I'll be telling you, you gotta move smarter than the next. Mm. You feel me? So for sure. When you were young, growing up in San Bernardino, did you come to LA much? Was that like hell a, no? No, never? I ain't never. No, hell no. Really? Never. I didn't start coming to LA until I started driving. Really? Yes, and that's probably was. I started coming to, I started coming to LA really probably like a year ago. Okay. I wasn't like I don't I don't come to LA like that because I don't know LA. Mm. I'll be feeling like I'm out of bounds. I am out of bounds. You right. know what I'm saying? I don't know their politics. I don't know who they beef for. I could be at the wrong place at the wrong time. I mean, I've been to my me being with like a female, if they bring me to some bullshit. I'm like, hell no, I ain't getting out. Like they used to have me try to tell me to pump gas. Yeah. Nigga, what? You pump the gas. Nigga, <laughs> I ain't about to go pump the gas. I don't even know where I'm at. Right. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, y'all telling me I'm in a Hoover's. What the hell? I'm not pumping gas. I'm from San Bernardino. Right. I don't know your politics. You yeah. feel me? So it's like you're in a Hoover neighborhood wearing that. They might have some on questions. My <laughs> on my mama, I'm still from San Bernardino, though. Right. Yeah. I mean, it, it, LA is like the ultimate place where you know when when people ask you where you're from, if your answer ain't really really simple and satisfactory to that person, is a big fucking issue. And I just I can't even imagine when saying from San Bernardino, that's got to be like, oh man, we got so many questions to ask you now. Yeah. Some you know, it's all love though. You know, I got love for LA. Ain't nothing towards them because they support a nigga. Mm. LA really support me, and that's why I fuck with LA. Cause I seen you in Long Beach with DW yeah. Flame. DW, How was that? that's my nigga. Cause yeah. I really fuck with DW. He a solid nigga. I be feeling like when you hate on a nigga that's genuine, cause there's something wrong with you. Mm. You feel me? Cause, cause I don't know what that you know what I'm saying what his shit is, but he a genuine nigga. Right. I fuck with DW. You feel How'd me? you get in touch with him? Well, DW reached out to me. You know what I'm saying? He, I think I don't know if I was following Cub first or he was following me. Don't I don't know what it, how, how, how it happened, but you know niggas just hit hit each other up here and there, and then he's like he like Cub, let's do a song together. And we did a song together. Right. You know what I'm saying? And, and everybody fucking with it. You feel me? That's my nigga, though. You know what I'm saying? No, yeah, he's dope. Because I did the interview with him because I had Trey D hitting me up, telling mm -hmm. me about him, and I wasn't fully tapped in. I had seen a little bit of it, but I didn't realize that that interview did super good. People loved it. Like, mm -hmm. people really, he's just, like, really, he's a good soul. He's, he's great yeah, on he's camera. People dude. really like yeah, him a lot. he's a good dude. You know what I'm saying? I, I mean, I don't got nothing bad to say about him. Yeah, I, yeah. Me, personally, I don't believe what another nigga tell me anyways. Mm. You can't tell me some shit that's going to make me believe you, bro. Only, only to let me see it for myself. You feel me? So. What about being in Long Beach like that though? Like just being in a, a completely different environment, different neighborhood, and like you're just around all these people. I'm sure it was all love, but it was, was love. it a little weird what? for you? It was love. No, it wasn't. Cause it was love. <laughs> Hell yeah. You know what I'm saying? He had his homies. I had my homies, and it wasn't no. You know what I'm saying? It was one nigga from his set that I really fuck with. You mm. know what I'm saying? Cause it was a solid nigga. He made sure we left there safe. Right. He went like when, cause my we was in a, the six four on the on the thing. And we was on the six four, and if the the four had uh the uh, a on had broke, so we were stuck there. Mm. You know what I'm saying? That nigga stayed there until like eleven o'clock. He told us straight up, nigga, we gonna make sure you 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 get out of this motherfucker safe. Mm. You know what I'm saying? All my niggas were sitting there. I mean, we wasn't sleeping, but still, they this the it's the fact that niggas was showing love to us being from San Bernardino. Cause you know, some niggas from LA feel some type of way about San Bernardino, but you know, it is what it is. But it, it we got love for LA. So, but they made I far fuck with D Dub. You know what I'm saying? His mm. homies are solid. Hell yeah, that's dope. Um.
yeah in terms of just what you feel like you're trying to accomplish is there anybody else who stands out for you that you would like want to work with at this point i know you've been trying to tap in with my boy ad who who was apparently so drunk last night that he couldn't make it today uh yeah but are you talking about as far as like artists yeah just like anybody that you're a big fan of that you see you doing know who i want to fuck with though really besides snoop i really think that first i want to fuck with snoop because number one everybody already compared me with him oh, yeah. and I think that would be something big, bro. If me and Snoop did some shit, like, yeah. come on, I, niggas already say I look like, or they already think I look like. Cause, right. cause, but that'd be hard. Uh, YG, yeah. you know what I'm saying? That would be some hard shit. There's a few niggas that I want to tap in with, you know. But me being, I'm, I'm, I'm prideful, bro. Mm. But in this, in this rap game, you can't be like that. You can't be like you got no other network. And that was my problem. Like, if you pay attention to how I move, bro. I don't have no features. Mm. I barely, I don't, it's all me because I feel like, nigga, I'd rather get it out the mud because, like, because I want, like, I tell, like, even I tell my homies, I tell everybody, like, when you, when it, in a rap game, I feel like it's important for you to build your own resume and build love within your, fa your fans because when people do features, people that do thousands of features, bro, and they shit, it's trash. It's super obvious. Yeah. That's not real. Thing. Yeah, it's like come on, bro. Here. Like you, like you, you don't, you don't feel like you're, you can make it on your own without without features. So I want to build my own. I wanted to build my own fan base, which I did almost a hundred thousand by myself. No manager, no co-sign, no nothing. Just me. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? And I built love within my fans, bro. So if if you pay attention to a lot of people, like back in the day, like most niggas fell off without that main dude mm. you know what i'm saying like look at snoop snoop still cracking the nigga is a he's an entrepreneur bro he, he's you can't look at look at ice cube because mm -hmm. like all everybody you know what i'm saying because they built love within they they fans and within their own music by themselves first and the crazy thing about snoop is that none of these kids now even remember that he was a gangster rapper mm -hmm. it's like he's a grown-ass pimp or whatever, whatever he, superstar whatever yeah, his star, identity is now you know? On G. Yeah. yeah you know i mean you want to teach your kids a different side of you mm. you know you don't want to show them that side definitely so when you picked your rap name, what what was your mentality? <laughs> I, I, and I, was was the number one concern not like, damn, people are gonna think I compare me to Snoop too much? Look, you to be honest on everything I love, Colonel Jeez, that my name wasn't it didn't come from Snoop album. I didn't even know Snoop had an album named Doggy Style wow, until okay. people put that in my head. And I'm a fan of Cub, but I never looked at his albums. I was always, you know, listening to his music. And my name wasn't Doggy Style wasn't supposed to be my rap name. That was an Instagram name. Oh, okay. But since people was calling me that, I ran with it with a rap name. Right. So that's how that came built on it because I I feel like I was a dog, bro. Like, and that doesn't mean by just female type shit. That it, it can mean whatever you wanted to mean. But <laughs> it mine it was it was like the anger I had in me, bro. Like when you a dog, you don't think. You know, mm -hmm. most dogs don't think when they act. You know, when they react to things. Like I, like I, I brought it up a few times in the interview that if you pay attention, like there's a picture of a dog and he jumping off a cliff to get a bird, but he ain't thinking. He ain't he ain't re, uh, seeing what's going up under him. You know what I'm saying? But his his anger is so built on trying to get that bird mm -hmm. that he might, you know, go to his own death because of that. You right. feel me? So it's, it's that's how I feel like I was moving, bro. Like a, a fucking crash, you know I me. Mean? Mm -hmm. But you know, but. When people compare me to Snoop, I take in, I just soak it in. Thank you, right. I appreciate it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's that's to me, that's a compliment. Right. Cause he's a legend. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? He doing his thing. He still he still is relevant, like yeah. a motherfucker. Very. You know. And he's really got like the life that I think kind of all of us want to build for ourselves. Where you know he's really able to just be posted up in this fucking compound doing whatever the fuck he mm -hmm. wants every day. It's kind of like the ultimate dream for anybody. And and just the fact that he's been able to stay cool and relevant for all these years. I was watching TV the other day. I ain't never watched TV. And he's fucking, I'm yeah. seeing him in all these commercials and shit where yeah. he's just doing different roles. I'm like, bro, this dude is making so much money. He's doing his thing, man. He a, man, he a made nigga. Mm. He a made nigga. He built love within everybody, so... Everybody knows Snoop. When I was listening to your uh, most recent EP today, that's one thing that stood out to me, though, is that for somebody who, you know, most of your big songs on YouTube and shit are, like, real gangster-type songs, you definitely got a lot to say to the women out there. Oh, yeah, I do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you got a soft side a little bit, right? Yeah. What? Yeah, what? Come on, bro. I, I do this. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I love the women. Oh, my mama, I do. You know what I'm saying? But, yeah, I got... I'll be saying... 
good things and bad things. Right. I'm going off of experience. Like I said, some of this shit, a lot of that, my music is real shit. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Off of experience or just seeing other people go through things. And, you know, I mean. Are those two very different mentalities for you, though, when you're making a song about the streets versus a song about girl? Uh, I don't know. Most likely, sometimes, no, I don't know. You know what I'm saying? Because, I mean, you got to, I mean, it has to be, don't it? Like, mm. you got to think differently when you're writing something about a female. But, but when you pop up in the studio, is it just all based on mood? How are you feeling at that moment? It depends on the beat. I know the mood of the beat. Mm. So if my, if my homie Ace play, the, play a, a beat, I know how I'm going to come on there. Mm. Okay, I'm going to do this for the women. I know how to do this. Woo, woo. Oh, this, I'm going to talk my shit in this about mm. the niggas. Woo, woo. I, know how to, I know how to approach your beat. Like If you put a beat on, I know how to go about it. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So that's how I do it. Are there any girls left in San Bernardino that are bad enough for you now that you're a successful rapper? Man, you don't want to alienate your whole city, but <laughs> <laughs> telling me that's a bad thing. Man, question. I don't fuck with none of them. I, I mean... <laughs> Oh my mama, girl, jeez, no, <laughs> I they, hell no, they they not all females. I mean, you got bad in every city, but San Diego them bitches is whooped, girl, jeez, ah hell no. But not all of them. Right. Some of them are good female. I will never make one female the reason why I treat you. You know what I'm saying? No, I can't do that. But everybody been with everybody. I'm put it like that. Yeah, it's like it's a small city. We got the biggest. We the biggest county mm. in the world. We got like 50, 52 cities, but as far as San Bernardino City, it's small. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Everybody know everybody. Everybody been with everybody. I don't mm. fuck with them bitches. And not only that, you don't know who they know. Right. They can set you up. So I don't really fuck with San Bernardino females. You know what I'm saying? I was listening to the new I Swear Vezo album, and Rio the Young OG had a verse on it, and he's from Flint, Michigan. And he said on, one, on, on part of the verse, he said... If you got $40, you can fuck every bitch in Flint. And I was like, wow, I ain't never heard somebody yeah. say that Pussy about whoop. their city. <laughs> yeah, they coochie whoop. Hell no. Nah, there's probably a lot of cities where that's pretty man, close to them, true, right? Yeah, what? San Bernardino's one of them. $40, They nasty I mean. as hell, dude. They nasty. They'll fuck everybody. Your homie, all type of shit. They don't give a fuck. <sighs> nasty. $40. Man, come on, I'm not about to... You think I'm about to cuff one of y'all? Nigga, hell no. Right. I'll treat you like the way you act. You get treated accordingly. Right. You know, so... Yeah. So if, if you, you ever see those memes where they point out like a rapper's baby mama versus like the girl he's with now, mm -hmm. if, if they did my that to you, mama, how would you feel? My baby mama bad. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we don't get along like that. I don't, we don't, I don't, you know what I'm saying? Now we're trying to get along, but my baby mama fine as hell. Okay. You know what I'm saying? But I don't fuck with her like that. Right. You know, but what, she's we a, cool. little, a little too San nah, Bernardino we, for you. <laughs> 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 nah, girl, oh, geez. <laughs> nah, I won't, I won't never put all, all business out there, but she a, she a good mom. She's mm. a great mom. She's a good person, you know, but we, we just all, we just, things got in the way, you know what I'm saying? So I just left it at that and just try to work on just us being, you know, hopefully she do change in the future, mm. but we, we right now, we just cool. Like, I'm cooling. I'm chilling. I'm not about to, no, I'm cool off of that. That's what's up. You're not looking for another baby mama anytime Fuck soon? Fuck no. <laughs> Hell no. What? Oh, I'm, I'm cool, dude. I'm chill. I mean, I want another kid, but right. you a girl going to have to work for that. Mm. Like, no, I'm no, not going to happen. All right, especially with me having a name, you tripping. Right. You tripping. Plan B is a motherfucker. Mm. You know what I'm saying? That's real. And condoms is too, so just saying. I keep a, 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 a what's, it, what's it called? The, 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 the Nuva ring? I just keep one of them in the fucking the fuck in the, the glove compartment. What is the yeah. ring? <laughs> the ring they put in and that stops all the shit. No, because I said the reason why I couldn't get that out is because I said to my homie the other day, I'm like, you gotta wear a condom because you be fucking bitches that live in their cars. Man. And he said that's why I keep a Nuva ring in the center console. What the fuck? <laughs> hell, dog. Good, crazy. I don't. Hell, dog. I don't do that. Cause yeah. I have to. I hate condom, but you mm. need them. Right. You don't know what these bitches is walking around with. You know what I'm saying? So you you. If they fucking you, they fucking the next nigga too. So I'm cool. Connors is a motherfucker. Mm. You feel me? So I, I can't. I ain't had one on in years, but I heard, I heard they're important. That's crazy. I've been in a relationship for five years. Oh, yeah, you've been in a relationship. I thought you was just fucking But we fuck girls, dude. but we make them get tested first. Oh, yeah. And then who knows what the fuck they're doing in between getting tested. I mean, that's but. the best thing to do, but you got to make sure they get bring paperwork too. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. But they're like porn girls mostly, so they're, they're you, used to... You nasty as hell, dude. Yeah, yeah, we are. <laughs> we uh, are disgusting. Hell no, dude. I heard them bitches be whooped, too. The porn girls? Yeah, what? Know. They they're professionals, fuck. bro. 
Yeah, nasty yeah. shit. I'm not hell no. We got Cause. Tiana Trump coming in next week. You want to meet her? Fuck no. No? Hell oh. no. Cause that shit don't flatter me. You're nigga. bougie I'm, already, man. I've been there, done that. I ain't. <laughs> you're trying. just getting started as a rapper, and you're already too bougie for Tiana man, Trump. I respect it. I don't even know who she is. <laughs> Kill oh, right. G's. Like I heard she's of a her. legend, bro. You probably know. Me, her, all right. Cause well, I guess I'm gonna meet her because the homie said yeah, is she good. Okay, cool. well, she's I, a, I don't know who she she's is. A very bro. I heard of her. top giver. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Cool. Uh, yeah. Cool. Oh, cool. <laughs> she sounds cool. That's what's up. <laughs> For sure. All right. So when you think about your career and where you're at right now and everything, what what do you feel like you got to do to take it to the next level? Are you looking to sign? Are you are you feeling like you could just keep blowing your shit up on your own? Well, how, how do you feel about it? I mean, if they come at me correctly, I'll sign to somebody. But Right now, I'm doing me, but this shit hard. Mm. On my mama, it's hard, dude, because, you know, I got to I gotta live my life at the same time. It's, I got to take care of my, my, my real life besides just rapping and shit like that because, you know, this is still real. I got bills. I still got shit like that. So I invest all my shit into myself, of course. But it's hard because, especially, I ain't got a manager. I ain't got nobody, bro. I'm doing this shit, like, literally on my own. Cause, mm. like, but it's good. I mean, can nobody tell me that I'm they the reason why I'm where I'm at? You mm. feel me? I made this my own reason why I'm at. You know what I'm saying? So I built my own fan. I built everything by myself. You know mm. what I'm saying? A lot of these dudes, and it was so crazy, though, me coming out of San Bernardino, that's why I feel like I really am one of those, uh, a nigga. I'm, I really feel because it's hard to make it out of San Bernardino, bro. Mm. Like, besides the vibes, I'm just saying, like, in general, like, nobody gonna know who, don't know who the fuck we is. Like, they don't know who we are. You know what I'm saying? When, like I said, when people come out here, they think of L.A. Mm. automatically off tops. This time where I've been in Florida, and they already know I'm from California by the way I dress. And they be like, you from L.A.? I'm like, nigga, I'm from San Bernardino. But that's what's funny is that say you were to have a giant fucking smash radio hit tomorrow when it was, you know, <sighs> the biggest song ever. Motherfuckers are still just going to be like, yeah, he's from L.A. Yeah, because it's close enough that it's like the way yeah. that like if you're from Jersey, people kind of are like, yeah, he's New York, New York. Rapper, you know, yeah, yeah, it's right there. But I, it's, it's cool. I mean, I just want people to know about San Bernardino. You yeah. feel me? I'm not from L.A. Mm. You know what I'm saying? It's time for San Bernardino to get me on the map, too. Like, mm. hey, what? You know what I'm saying? But and I'm going to make it happen. I already been making it happen, bro. Like people been paying attention to the IE period, mm. you know, but it's like. It's just more difficult when you ain't really had a person boom before you in your time right? to put a spotlight on the eye or San Bernardino where people put the eye on it. You know what I'm saying? Like, they know about San Bernardino. Like, L.A. is known. Everybody, it's so easy for a dude from L.A. to get on before a San Bernardino nigga do. You know what I'm saying? Because mm. of the clout they have from the gangs, from even from Hollywood and shit like that. They got a lot of clout out here. Mm. We don't have that. But I don't blame people because you land in San Bernardino. What the hell are you landing out here for? Right. Yeah. Ain't nothing out there. You just sparked my memory. I want to redo this. This is probably the most influential or legendary IE shade I ever read in my life. Mm -hmm. Tyler, the creator, 2019 tweeted, wanted to publicly thank my mom for not moving to the Moreno Valley or the IE in 2004 like a lot of people from Los Angeles did because, man, I would have sucked. Thank you. You wouldn't have sucked, but I mean, you probably would have been. <laughs> you definitely would have been, been a different kind of guy. You, yeah, you, you. <laughs> I mean, I, I don't know what to say about that, bro. But <laughs> shit, I mean, it's up to you. But San Bernardino, yeah, IE ain't. It's not. It's. It's. I love San Bernardino. Trust mm. me. But it's not a place you can just easily make it out of, bro. Mm. Hell no. He probably would have still been. Out here, bro. Mm. My mama ain't nobody made it. Right. I'm gonna make it. I'm gonna make sure I make it. Hell yeah. You know what I'm saying? Even if I die before, God forbid, but niggas gonna know my my music for sure. Mm. You know? So Yeah, man, I respect that. And there ain't nobody, like you said, there's nobody that could say they put you on. There ain't like a big song that people can point to and be like, oh, he's he's the dude who had the song with so and so. Mm -hmm. You know, just the way you've been building it up very <laughs> organically, I think it's it's a beautiful thing. I appreciate it. For you sure. You know what I'm saying? I appreciate it. But it's it's I don't know I just I just always wanted to build love within my myself and within my fans because they ain't gonna never turn you when you have loyal fans they ain't gonna never turn their back on you right you know what I'm saying like I said man if you just constantly getting featured ain't saying nothing wrong with it but nigga you not believing in your own craft to mm -hmm. me you feel me like build your own because once you could do a feature with the top artist or whatever and don't mean your shit gonna pop. 
It does not mean that. You right. know what I'm saying? I've seen people doing stuff with a lot of big artists and they shit they ain't even crack like theirs because they got their own love. They don't nobody know who you are. If so, if you make that a a a, a goal to no, let people know who you are by building your own love, making your own music, striving, and you know what I'm saying, then you's gonna then everything gonna pop behind that. You know what I'm saying? I branded myself. You feel me? So and I'm gonna keep branding myself. Uh, you know. Yo, I forgot to ask this earlier, but you got shot during COVID, huh? Yeah, I did. I got shot. Yeah. How, how you feeling now? Are you like physically 100? percent Hell yeah, I'm 10 toed, oh, okay. and that shit tickled. <laughs> My mama. <laughs> How many times did you get hit? I got shot twice. Okay. My uncle, my uncle got killed. You know what I'm saying? Wow. You know, rest in peace, the big slink. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, he got killed, and some other nigga. They, they know. I don't know. Somebody they know. He got shot too. So it is. It, it, it was bad, bro. Right. You know what I'm saying it was bad, and that's why I tell you. That's why I was telling you about as far as me. What wasn't going around my daughter because mm. the way it happened was too dangerous because they, they niggas rolled to my house because like they rolled to my house. This is when you're still in San Bernardino. Yeah, I was okay. in San Bernardino. I wouldn't listen to niggas like mm. I told you. I was being a crash dummy. The homies coming to me telling me, "Nigga, you gotta get up out of here. You bigger than this." Telling me this. Everybody was telling me, and I didn't listen. It wasn't that I wasn't really wasn't listening, but I'm like, cause I'm not, I'm not. Like I can't just up and go until like, it happens. Until it don't it happen. feel like it's really necessary. Yes, like you know? the way it happened was too. My daughter was there at first. I called my baby mama to come get her because if my time was over as far as it's now, you know, and I was gonna leave. My daughter left probably like forty minutes before them niggas came and and, and shot my shit up. And they just shot the house. No, up. they shot. I was standing outside. outside they was probably right? like, uh, I'm not gonna lie to you. I'm I'm I, where I'm sitting. They probably was like from right here to that black thing, that close. Wow! And just shot the shit up, shot it up, bro. And my daughter, her 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 uh, her, uh, uh little Tory shit was right there, nigga. And after I got popped, my uncle died and shit. He died right there. I watched him die. You know what I'm saying? I'm I'm, saying, I'm trying to get him to stay alive. You know what I'm saying? I'm telling one of the niggas to keep slapping because he he's sitting there rubbing him and he and that nigga submitted to that shit. You feel me? My uncle passed away. You know what I'm saying? And then when I got to the hospital, my daughter not even knowing what's going on. She was asking her mama like, "Daddy in you know, daddy in the hospital." Woo woo. And I just cried to my daughter because I'm like, "See, it could have been you." You mm. feel me? That's why niggas don't niggas. You gotta really when it's when it's when it's game banging, bro. You gotta really watch who you around, bro, because any nigga could get it. Wow. And, that, and, and that's and it sucks, but that's why I don't. I don't. If I if if I go somewhere, I don't really, you know. I take my baby where I now I move now I'm out of that motherfucker. I, I be with my baby. Mm. You know what I'm saying? I left that shit. I left everything because like you know, but. It's like, like, I wasn't scared for me. I don't give a fuck. If, if my daughter wasn't here, bro, I'd be, be a whole different nigga. Mm. You feel me? But since I'm living for her and she didn't understand what was going on, and she was so happy to see me, mm. I just cried like, man, you don't understand. You, I'm not going to tell you, though, but you don't understand that this shit could have really been you. Wow. Just because you love your daddy so much, you want to be around your daddy. And your daddy wasn't even being smart enough to let you know or not even let you know just smart enough to even move before i had to, I, I i'm done bro like you, like they said you take things for granted you don't know until it happened that is crazy it took that for me to finally say fuck fuck you know fuck living out there mm. you feel me but like i said i care about mine and i'm glad i'm glad that it took that not not that way not like I'm. Oh, I wanted to get no. Like I'm just glad it opened my eyes. I'm. I'm able to live and through it and say some shit because you know niggas like to. The, There've been a lot of bullshit behind that shit. Niggas mm -hmm. like to spread line ass rumors and you know I. I my family don't fuck with me because of this shit. You know because of that. Yes. You really. Know? Yes. Yeah, so there's a lot of shit going on, but yeah. you know, but it's you know certain people don't fuck with me because it is it's, it's bullshit behind it. But I. I, I I just take it like a man, cause like I know what happened. Uh -huh. You feel me? I know what happened. Can no nigga tell you some shit that he wasn't there to tell you about? Right. You feel me? And if you believe a clown, you a clown with him. You know, what's kind of interesting about you is that you like a lot of people in their songs are you know dissing dead people, banging on people, et cetera, et cetera. 
but like you're not really banging on people so much but when you have had traumatic things happen to you like getting jumped getting shot etc you put all that in the music yeah, yeah i don't care without necessarily a, a lot of people put that in the music but then it has to be pure revenge retaliation yeah, music look, you don't really put that part you gotta in it, right? you gotta move smarter than mm, the next yeah. dude let me tell you why because number one you gotta think niggas is watching mm. and the peoples is watching you you feel me? That's why I, I mean, I was saying some stupid shit before, but man, I watch what I say because I don't move that way no more mm. because I'm never going to leave a track for me. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's just stupid. Niggas, like, <laughs> music is the easiest way to, to catch a nigga. Mm. You feel me? Especially from the from those boys. You know what I'm saying? It's the easiest way, but I don't say, like, a lot of my shit, it's real shit, and then, of course, it's, it's you, you going, you, everybody exaggerates certain mm. things. You feel me? But most of my shit is real life, you know what I'm saying? But I'm just saying, cause I don't, I, you gotta, I don't do all that. That I mean, if, if you did something to me, I'm gonna I'm talk my shit, bro. Mm. That's just me, you know what I'm saying? But every week I read about different rappers in jail for fucking 20 years yeah, for, or dying, and, and it's it's like fully mapped out for the police in the lyrics. Yeah, he put this song out where he said he, but like, it don't mean and, it's true though, right? A lot of these niggas, that shit be fiction. Mm. You know what I'm saying? But it, it's, I mean. But they it, end up doing 20 years. is probably a pretty good chance that it was true. It's tr <laughs> that but, or, yeah. you know, it's sometimes they just use that shit against you. Yeah, yeah. That's all it is. And a lot of that shit don't be real. But, I mean, if, you, if it's real, I mean, only a dumb nigga would say some shit like that and mm. leave evidence like that, bro. Most niggas ain't going to say a lot of that shit is just fucking made up. Like, like niggas say, just respect a nigga for having talent. Mm. If it's his, if his shit is made up, I mean, just respect him for being an entertainer. You know what I'm saying? But we know what this nigga is, is and what he ain't. You feel me? That type of shit. But I don't know. It's, just, it's different. For sure. Um, what do you want for your daughter that you didn't have as a kid? Shit, I want my baby to experience shit I didn't. Mm. Just automatically. I didn't experience traveling. You know what I'm saying? I experienced a lot of things, bro. And I just want her to experience a better life automatically. You know what I'm saying? Even if I got to put her in prep school, I don't care. Mm. She a girl for number one. You know what I'm saying? I don't want her being around San Bernardino. Them bitches ain't shit. <laughs> I'm being honest, bro. And, it, and, it, and it's facts. Not, I'm not saying every female from San Bernardino. No, right. it's not. But I, the females I've seen and shit, that I don't want her around that shit. You know what I'm saying? I want her to just be somebody. So and if I got to move to to do that, I'm going to do that. I don't give a fuck what the next nigga feel, as long as he don't step in my face with it. You feel me? But it's just like <clears throat> everybody wants good for their kids, I hope. Mm. If you don't, then what the fuck you have one for? You feel me? To make a fuck they life up like yours is? Like, come on, bro. You want to me, I feel like when you have a kid, you want to you want another you. Mm. But a better you. Yeah, you feel yeah. me? Or something that's something that's going to continue you on. A version of you that you can protect exactly, from a lot of the worst that you shit can that protect. To you, you know. Can do you know how how much of a blessing to have that? A you running around this motherfucker? Can you, mm. can you imagine? That's why I can't respect a nigga that don't take care of his and or a woman. 99% of the people you grew up around, they don't get the, the privilege of being able to take their kid up out the neighborhood. Nah. You know? And it's, nah, I ain't going to say it's a privilege. Like, if you want it, it can happen. I mean, you work for it. Yeah. it I work for it. And that's, what, that's another thing is niggas be hating. You know what I'm saying? How can you hate on the next nigga? Because he worked for it. Mm. You, when you can do it too, nigga, you got the same. You got the same twenty four. It all depends on what you do with it. You got feet. You got you got everything I got. You know what I'm saying? But do you have the 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 drive for it? I do. You know what I'm saying? Do you want your kid to do better? Do you want yourself to do better? Ask yourself that. Mm -hmm. I want that, and that's why it's happening. Niggas get mad at me all they want for what, nigga? You know what I'm saying? Y'all could do the same shit. You feel me? And like niggas be like, oh, nigga, I can't. This nigga, you you could do what you want to do. Mm. You feel me? If you want to get out the hood, you could do it. Mm. One thing I tell tell niggas though, once you a game member or a game member, is you gonna always be one. Mm. You can't you can't you can't. The only way that you can escape that is if you die, mm. or you run away from it. You saying you know what I'm saying? Because you can't say you, even if you go to jail, you gotta deal with that behind that. Mm. You gotta deal with the niggas that bang in there. They still know you from. You can't reason you can the reason why. You gonna always remain a gang member or a gang banger because your your enemies still exist. So nigga, whether you stop fucking gang banging, they still know who you are. You feel me? Uh -huh. So it's like nigga, you could be like, oh, I don't gang bang. I'm an OG. I'm this and that. I don't do that. But nigga, you niggas know who you is though. That don't mm -hmm. mean nothing to me. One of my relatives was just saying that to me. They're like, why why did these rappers like keep dying? I go, 
I'm like trying to avoid that conversation. I'm like, this is a lot of gang shit. And she's yeah. just like, she's like, why do they get rich and famous to just still be in a gang? That's I'm like, dumb. that's not how that. I'm like, man, that's you don't dumb. get to just dip right away. Yeah. You don't, but you. I mean, you man. You can separate you yourself, can separate take a different role, exactly, but you're not but really. You can't really run from and it. People still want to kill you. Your best yeah, bet is still yeah. going to be to be just around move, people you, you feel like you can trust. Exactly. You know, be around niggas you can trust. Move different. Move wiser than the next. Don't tell niggas where you live. I don't give a fuck if you the eight, your, your closest homies mm. because you don't know when the hell y'all going to fall out. Right. And he might be on some jealous shit. You know what I'm saying? Tell niggas where you live or even try to do some, some backdoor shit. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, man, you just got to build your own destiny, I guess. Mm. You know what I'm saying? You Your life is what you make it. You know what I'm saying? You living that way and you want to stay that way, you're going to stay that way. You mm. feel me? You could always, like I tell my homies, like my, my true homies, nigga, you could bring the hood with you if that's what you want, but ain't nothing better than money. Ain't mm. nothing better than that. I can't never, how can you gang bang and still broke at the same damn time? Mm. You feel me? You know what I'm saying? So it's like, I'm, I want to do better for me. Rather, I'm not going to ever, like I told niggas, somebody got to be the smart nigga. You feel me? Everybody can't be a crash dummy because we all crash dummy. We all going to die behind this shit. Mm. Somebody got to be a smart nigga. If I got to do that, I'm going to do it. You For feel sure. me? Somebody got to be smart out of it. can't be 10 stupid niggas. You feel me? Because all 10 going to either die or either, either be in jail. So somebody got to be smart and, and smarten up the rest. So it'd be 10 smart niggas. And you could be an influence to you know dozens or hundreds of people from your area alone who who might look at you i look, I, I interview people all the time who are like the first person to pop off out of their city mm -hmm. and then there's always <laughs> people right behind them who who see that and they mm -hmm. realize that they could do something similar yeah, you know? that's yeah. good though I, I like i tell niggas don't hate on me instead of hating on me be inspired nigga i don't do this to build hate mm -hmm. it's gonna come with it but i don't do it to build it I want to build love, bro. I'd rather a nigga love me than hate me because I'm tired of looking for enemies out on, behind myself. You know what I'm saying? I'm, niggas get tired of that shit. You know what I'm saying? But it's just like, man, I'm glad some of the niggas that's in my circle is paying attention to what I'm doing. Mm. And, and they want better for themselves because you only could tell somebody so much before, you know. But I'm glad that my niggas that I hang with is paying attention to my path and taking it and trying to do something with it. You know what I'm saying? Because if not, you're going to be like the rest of these hating ass niggas or crash dummy ass niggas. You feel me? A nigga going to always tell you some shit that he won't do. <laughs> that's facts. For sure. Don't ever tell me to do some shit if you ain't going to go do it. That's half a rap music. Yeah, that's yeah, that's, that's, telling that's you that you gang banging. That's rap that music. That's do. everything, bro. You feel me? Don't tell me you to do some shit that you know damn well you wouldn't do. Mm. Even if I told you or in, you know what I'm saying? Don't tell me that because I'm not a crash dummy. Mm. I was, but I'm not no more. I'm too wise for it and I'm starting to feel like I'm, I'm trying to look for my purpose, bro. And I'm starting to see it a little bit. You feel me? So and then the, the to, to see the uh the inspiration I have on a lot of people, that shit is deep to me. You mm. feel me? So it is what it is. I want to inspire my homies. And I want to inspire my family, my fans, supporters, and everything. You feel I'm me? I'm inspired. That's love. I appreciate Let's that. Let's go. No, I'm a big believer for sure. I think yeah. you, you got the talent, you got the star power. I feel like there's only there's only big things to come for you. Yeah, I hope so. And then, I mean, if not, man, it is what it is. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, it's good, bro. Definitely. Uh, anybody want to thank? Any shout outs? Uh, I want to thank my 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 supporters for show sure. before after God. I want to thank God. I'm, I'm not even gonna lie to you. I stopped believing in Him, but now I'm a neutral believer only because of the shit I was going through. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? But I want to thank God. I want to thank my supporters because without my support, that's one thing. As as for, as far as like being an artist and just being a person, period. You gotta realize. That your fans is the one, the reason why you're even a factor. You mm. feel me? A lot of famous people don't don't think they they fans, bro. Cause without them, you won't be making that money. Uh -huh. You know what I'm saying? You won't have fan, you won't have stages to go perform your shit at. Thank them, they made you. You know what I'm saying? So I want to thank my fans. I want to thank my true homies that been on my side. I want to thank my my baby girl. She's my, of course my number one priority because she gave me shit to live for and die for if I have to. You know what I'm saying? I want to thank my brother, you know what I'm saying, for believing the nigga, my pops, you know what I'm saying, and my family, because that just stood by my side and never folded on me, because, you know, I, I, a lot of niggas folded on me, you know, after that situation, mm. you know what I'm saying? From families to homies, niggas folded on me. But 
I just want to just, I'm just thankful, bro. You feel me? So that's all I got to say. Respect. Doggy Style, No Jumper, coolest podcast in the world. Check us out on YouTube, SoundCloud, iTunes. Like, comment, subscribe. NoJumper.com if you want to support. Appreciate you, man. For Appreciate real. you, family. Thank you.